composition of piecewise functions. Here we have two functions, They're both piecewise functions, and I want to find a definition for the composition of these two functions. Now right now you can pause the video and get a feel for both of these functions. So I, um, I'll assume as I'm going along that you have stopped the video and done like a table of values for f and a table of values for g, so you get a feel for what goes to where in each of the functions. Okay, so now you have a feel for these functions, and I want to find the composition, a, a, a rule, a definition for the function g of f of n. So this is going to be a function from the integers to the integers. And I'm going to do this by, um, first I'll write this as g of f of n. And so I'm looking at g. Now g um, when you plug in f of n into g, you're going to get 2 times whatever you're plugging in. So I'm plugging in f of n. So you're going to get 2 times f of n when f of n is even. And when f of n is odd, you're going to get f of n plus 1 over 2 if f of n is odd. So I've just done exactly what that function g tells me to do. So the question is, when is f of n even? Well, if you look at this function f of n, if you plug an even in here, you're going to get an even out. So this is true, f of n is even, when n is even. So I can say that um, I can make this rule be when n is even. And when n is even, f of n is equal to n plus 2. So I can replace the f of n with what it is when n is even, which is n plus 2. So I have 2 times f of n, which is n plus 2, if n is even, which makes f of n even also. And similarly, when do I use this part of the rule? I use it when f of n is odd. f of n is going to definitely be odd here when n is odd. So I'm going to have f of n, which is 2n plus 1. There's your f of n plus 1 over not over, two, uh, yeah, plus over 2 if n is odd. So I've done, again, the same thing. If n is odd, then my f of n is equal to 2n plus 1, and so I plug in the 2n plus 1 in there, I get the 2n plus 1 plus the 1 over 2. And then I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Um, you can either distribute that to or not. I like it distributed. I think it's a little prettier. If n is even. And this is going to be 2n plus 1 plus 1 is 2n plus 2 over 2 is just n plus 1 if n is odd. And so here again, you can plug in some values and see if, if, if this works. So if I plug an even value in, um, probably the easiest even value to plug in would be 0. If I plug in 0 in here, I'm going to get 2 times 0 is 0 plus 4 is 4. And if I do it the long way, if I take f of 0... 0 is even, so you get 0 plus 2 is 2, and then you take that even and plug it into g, and you get 2 times 2 is 4, so you get the same thing there. And an odd, if you plugged in, say, n equals 1 in here, you'd get 2. If you plug in n equals 1 into f, you're going to get 3, and then you plug that 3 in here, you're going to get 3 plus 1 is 4 over 2 is 2. So either way, you get the same thing. And again, I'm going to assume you can pause the video and play with this a little bit and don't need to watch me do it. So we have a rule for g of f of n is equal to this. And again, you can take that off and play with it somewhere. Okay, now let's try to compose these two functions in the other order. So we just did, what did we do? We did g of f, so now let's do f of g. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call this f of g of n. And then I'm going to plug that g of n into f. So what f tells me to do with what I'm plugging in is take what I'm plugging in and add 2 to it. If that thing I'm plugging in, which is g of n, is even. Or I take 2 times whatever I'm plugging in, which again in this case is g of n plus 1 if the thing I'm plugging in, which is g of n, is odd. So now I have to look at these two cases 
and see when this happens. And it's not quite as simple, I don't think, as the other direction because certainly when n is even, g of n is even, so this happens. when n is even. But it's also going to happen sometimes when n is odd. Because, like, if I plugged in n equals 3 in here, I would get 3 uh, plus 1 is 4 over 2 is 2. That's even. But if I plug in 5 in here, I get 5 plus 1 is 6 over 2 is 3. That's odd. So this right here is sometimes even and sometimes odd. So g of n can be odd in some cases when n, is, or g of n can be even in some cases when n is odd. So this also happens when n plus 1 over 2 is even. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an equation. So n plus 1 over 2 is even means n plus 1 over 2 equals 2p for some p in the integers. And so I can solve for n in terms of p, and I'm going to get n is going to be 4p minus 1. And so this part of the rule is going to happen when n is even, and also when n is equal to 4p minus 1. So I'm going to use this same rule sometimes when n is even and sometimes when n is odd. So let me start setting this up. So if n is even, then g of n is even, and we use we use that rule. So I'm going to do when n is even. So when n is even, g of n is even, and g of n is equal to 2n, so you're going to get 2n plus 2. But g of n is also even sometimes when n is odd, and that's when n looks like 2p minus 1 for some p in the integers. And so in that case, if n is equal to... Um, that should be 4p minus 1, not 2p minus 1. Sorry. Um, so when n is odd in this particular form, so it's not just odd, but it's a particular odd, it's 1 less than some multiple of 4, um, then n is odd, so g of n is going to be n plus 1 over 2, and so you're going to get n plus 1 over 2 plus 2. So I'm going to need a bigger curly bracket here because I'm going to have one more case. So we've got a case for when n is even. We've got half of the odds because half of the odds are going to look like this. They're going to be one less than a multiple of four. And then we're going to have to deal with the case where g of n is odd. And this happens when, well it certainly doesn't happen here, g of n is, this can't be odd, but this can be odd. Um, so you, when n plus 1 over 2 is odd means that um, it's equal to 2p plus 1 for some p in the integers. And so if you solve this for n, you're going to get n equals, multiply by 2, you're going to get 2p plus 2, and then minus 1, 4p plus 2 minus 1 is going to be 4p plus 1. So this is going to be the rest of the integers. And you can verify again, stop the video and think about this, that among these three cases, we've got all the integers, we've got all the evens, this is half the odds and this is the other half of the odds, because every odd integer is either one less or one more than a multiple of four. And so you can, you know, get your number line out and check that that is actually so. And so, if g of n is odd, and in this particular case, n is also odd, so if n is odd, then g of n is going to be n plus 1 over 2, and we're plugging in here, so you're going to get 2 times n plus 1 over 2, plugging the g of n in there, plus 1. And so I'm just going to clean this up algebraically, just like I did in the previous example, or composing these same two functions in the other order. So we have 2n plus 2, if n is even, and again, I think I've screwed up with my curly bracket and made it too small. This is going to be 2n, this is going to be n plus 1 over 2 plus 4 over 2. So it's going to be n plus 5 over 2 if n is equal to 4p minus 1 for some p 
and the integers. And then here I'm, the twos are going to cancel. I'm going to get um, n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2. And that's for values of n, your input, that look like 4p plus 1 for some p and z. And there we have a sort of a piecewise rule for f of g of n is equal to this guy here. And there it is. And again, you can stop the video and look at this function and verify that you just do like a table of values. Do a table of values like n equals negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, all the way up to maybe n equals 5 and do the g of n and then plug the result into f and then take that same n and plug it into this rule and make sure that this thing matches whether you do it a bit at a time or you do it blammo all at once here and also again think about the fact that among this and this and this we really do get all of the integers because remember in order for this to be a function from the integers to the integers it has to send everything in the integers somewhere so we have to have a case that deals with every possible integer we could come up with and we do. Okay. Very good.